Good day, my name is Conrad Teal with Customer Dynamics. Today I'd like to answer a question. It seems no matter what account or what contact I plug in an appointment, I always get an error saying one or more do not have email addresses. And I want to show that this can be a little confusing, but once you understand regarding and contacts and accounts and where emails are, it's actually pretty straightforward and it's a powerful tool inside of CRM. So here I've done an advanced find of a few appointments so that we can look at a couple situations. Um, we'll go through why some of these appointments work without the error and why some of them have the error and then we'll talk about how to do this right from the beginning. So first I'm going to show you an appointment. Um, an appointment with a regarding and required attendees. And we'll open this up. And you can see you get this obnoxious, at least one recipient does not have an email address or is marked as do not allow email. So the first thing we see here is that there's a required and that there's an Arlen Manufacturing Co. incorporated in here. We're going to double click on this and we're going to open up the Arlen Manufacturing account. And I'm going to expand this a little bit so that we can see some of the contacts. On the account form here, you can see there's no email address. But if you think about it, why would a company like Arlen Manufacturing have an email address? People have email addresses. So here we are with Paul Mitchell off to the side, and if we double click on him, because he's linked to the account, you can see he has an email address. But if we go back to this appointment, you can see that the required attendee has been made to be an account, not a contact. So that's why we're getting this error. On the regarding field, we can also see that we have an account selected just by this icon. You can see there's a little piece of paper sticking out of a file folder or, or file drawer. So I can tell that that's an account. This field doesn't matter. You can set regarding to an account and you can set regarding to a contact. But it's anything that's in this required or optional field that's key. So let's look at another example here. In this case, there's nothing in the required or optional field, so no one is required on this appointment and no one is optional on this appointment. And you have to think of these required and optionals as linking to Outlook, where you would be setting up an appointment and you would type in one of your contacts and an email address here to say, hey, this person is required and send them the meeting invite. And then this, rec this regarding field here, in this case, is related to a contact, but again, the recording field doesn't matter. Here's that individual's email address. One more situation I'd like to show you is, um, what if the required is a company? You can see this Amsbury Group is an account by the little symbol. And the required is an account. We're getting the obnoxious error. I'm going to double click on this in order to pull up the Amsbury Group. And you can see, once again, I double clicked on it. It's taken me to an account. In this case, it looks like there's an email address on the account because there's a primary contact set up, this John Huntress here. But really, this field is just a link to the contact while on the account. The account doesn't actually have an email address on it. If I was to double click, you can see I'm really going into a contact that has an email address. So if I went back here, and I went to the required field, and instead of making the required entity an account, I made it John, and I just started typing it and hit enter. I would get a couple options here. You can see this first icon is an account icon, and you can see John Huntress is a, is a contact, the primary contact tied to the account, but there's no email address showing up here, so that's probably a bad one to pick. Here, this icon is for a lead, um, John Huntress was obviously a lead that was put in originally into the system. Let's try that. So if I hit save down here and to the right, since autosave hadn't run yet, I'm still getting this error. Now I don't understand that because I know John has an email address. But when I double click on it and I go to the lead, I can see that when the lead was entered, no email address was put in. So this isn't going to work. So let's go back to our appointment. And here we are with John Huntress. You can see that lead flash by. I'm going to type in John Hunt again. And our third option is this contact card. It looks a little bit like a business card. And you can see here we're going to John Huntress. You can see there's an email address here. The moment I click this and click out and the autosave happens or I force a save by clicking down here, our error went away. 
because our required field is John Huntress. This is a contact with an account with a rather an email address entered. I still have the regarding as the whole Amsbury Group company, and I can I can click on this and I can dive in. So let's create an appointment from scratch real quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to enter uh, a required person. I'm going to go find a, a fake that I've set up. So here I can see this is an account by the icon. This is a contact. This is a lead. This lead actually had an email address put in when it was originally put in, so I'm going to select that. 